Well, hello, 1P, and welcome back. We're going to be talking about the volume of prisms and cylinders today. Uh, but first, we're going to play a little game. Well, not really a game, but I'll call it a game so it sounds more exciting. Uh, called What Shape Am I? We want to make sure you know the difference between a pyramid and a prism, because the way you find the volume of pyramids and prisms is similar, but it's different. And so you have to know which formulas you're using for all of these things. Um, so we're going to start with, uh, I'm going to circle all the prisms in green. So a prism is something like this thing here. It has two shapes that are exactly the same, like two faces that are exactly the same. So this has got a face in here, and then it's got exactly the same face behind it. Okay, now it's hard to see now that I've scribbled all over it, but it has two faces that are this exactly the same shape. And then all of the other things around it are rectangles. So that's how we can tell. You've got two parallel faces that are exactly the same, and then every other face surrounding those are rectangles. So what else? Well, here's one. I've got that face and that face are exactly the same, and then rectangles all around. So there's a prism. This is a prism, it's entirely made up of rectangles. Prism, 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 prism. Now here's an interesting one. This is a cylinder. Um, it's also kind of a prism. Um, but since we're differentiating between cylinders and prisms and cones and pyramids, we're not going to do this one because it's a cylinder, because it's got a special um, shape and there's no rectangles involved. So we're going to leave that one alone. Uh, here's another prism. Prism, prism, prism. Have we got them all now? I think we do. Now a pyramid doesn't have two faces that are exactly the same parallel to each other. It's only, it's got one face that could be kind of a funny shape and the rest of them are all triangles. So we're going to take a look at the pyramids and I'm going to circle them in red. So here's the one shape, the one lonely shape and then all the rest of them are triangles. And here's one lonely shape, and the rest are triangles. And we'll keep going here. Now, this one has all triangular shapes, um, which counts as a pyramid. And this is a pyramid, and a pyramid, and a pyramid, and a pyramid, uh, and a pyramid. Now, I think we got them all. Now, one thing that you can look at, pyramids come to a point. There's a point on top of a pyramid, and the prisms do not. So now how about cylinders? Well, cylinders, we'll do that in blue. Cylinders are kind of like a prism except they've got circles. And since they've got circles, there's no real rectangular sides. It's all sort of a smooth side. So those two things are cylinders. And the last thing we're going to circle in black are the cones. And cones are a cylinder that's coming to a point instead of having two parallel sides. So cones have something in shape with pyramids, and cylinders have something something in shape, something in common um, with their cones have something in common with pyramids and cylinders have something in common with prisms. So we are going to now take a look at what that actually means. So we're going to go to page width here. And so what to look for. Prisms um, have two faces exactly the same opposite each other. Now another way of saying that is that they are parallel. And then all other faces are rectangles. Now pyramid has a base uh, that can be any shape. But it doesn't have the opposite side. Instead it has all other faces are triangles that
come to a point. Now, how about a cylinder? Has two circles four faces parallel to each other. And then a smooth surface between. And cones have a circular base and then a smooth surface that comes to a point. Comes to a point. Alrighty. Now, how can you tell the difference between a prism and a pyramid? Um, this is all written out for you. A pyramid has a face called a base. All other sides attach to the base and meet at a point at the top. The pyramid is named for the shape of its base. Uh, this shape here, oh, there's no shape there. There it is. This shape is a square base pyramid because you can see on the bottom it's a square. All of those are marked. Uh, a prism has a base at the top, a base and a top that are parallel to each other and exactly the same. A prism is also named for the shape of its base. So this one here, uh, this was one of the funny ones from before, this is a trapezoidal prism. And even though it's not, it, it doesn't look like a base and a top because it's sort of set up on its side, we still call the this face here its base. And then on the other side, it has the top that's exactly the same shape. Now, some since circles don't have sides, uh, circular prisms and circular pyramids are given special names. So a circular prism is a cylinder and a circular pyramid is a cone. Now, we're going on to talk about the volume of prisms and cylinders. So we're not talking about pyramids and cones today. We're going to do that next. Right now we're talking about prisms and cylinders. So a prism is defined as a shape that has a constant cross section. In other words, if you cut the shape along its height, you get shorter versions of the same shape. So here's what I mean by that. If I take, this is a prism, Now, if I just cut this off, and I'm going to cut it off with it, with this, and make it shorter, I get basically the same shape, it's just a shorter shape. Okay? So it has a constant cross section because this piece where we cut is always the same shape. Um, this is also the definition for a cylinder or a circular prism. Okay? To find the volume of any prism, uh, which includes cylinders, you take the area of the base, so, and that can be either this or this up here, it doesn't matter, the base and the top are exactly the same thing, and we're going to multiply that by the height of the object, and the height is the distance from the base to the top, or the distance between those two things that are the same. Oops, that won't go away. Uh, there we go, picked the wrong tool. Okay, so we have the following formula, volume equals area of the base times height where area of the base you can find by using the appropriate shape formula for the area of the base and height, capital H is the height, which in this case means the distance between the two faces that are the same shape and parallel. So now a rectangular prism is the easiest thing to find because to find the area of the base is just length times width. So the area of the base in this case will be down here. To find that area of the base, we just do length times width, and then you always find area of the base times the height. So we can just call it all length times width times height. So in this case, if we know those three dimensions, we can just multiply them. Length times width is the area of the base, so 5 times 8 is the area of the base, and then we multiply it by the height, which is 4. So 5 times 8 
is 40 times 4 is 160. So this is 160. It's measured in inches. And since we're talking about volume, which is three-dimensional, okay, it has a length, a width, and a height, we have to give it inches cubed. Now, find the volume of a triangular prism. Now, the triangular prism is more complicated because we have to find the area of the base, which is a triangle. So finding the area of the triangle is a little more complicated than length times width. So the area of the triangle is a half base times height. And so he here, down here, our base here is 12 because it's going to be the same as this. So the remember for a triangle, the base meets the height at a 90 degree angle. So if the base meets the height at a 90 degree angle, this is what we're talking about here. Here's the height of the triangle and here's the base because there's the 90 degree angle. And of course this base, this triangle on the bottom is the same as the triangle on the top. So this is going to be 12. So we take a half, the base is 12, and the height, and remember the height is the height of the triangle, uh, 6.3. Half of 12 is 6, so we just do 6 times 6.3, which gives us 37.8. And that is feet squared, because we just found the area of the base. Now to find the volume, we take this thing that we just found, the area of the base. All of those are the same thing. We take the area of the base that we just found, which was 37.8, and we multiply it by the height of the prism. Now the height of the prism here is the area from one, uh, from the base to the top. So if we take a look at this, and I'm going to erase some of that again. If we take a look at this, here's the, the base, is this, um, this yellow thing here. And the top is this blue thing right here. And the distance from the yellow part to the blue part, you've got to try and be able to think three-dimensionally, is this thing in here, which is 7. So the height of the, thi of the whole prism is 7 uh, feet. So 37.8 times 7 is 264.6. And this is measured in feet, and since it's a volume measurement, which is three-dimensional, we have to have cubic feet. Okay, find the volume of the following cylinder. Well, the area of the base of a cylinder is uh, a circle, and to find the area of a circle, it's pi r squared. Now, this tells me that the diameter is 10, which means that the radius has to be half of that which is 5. So we're going to do pi, pi times 5 squared. Now 5 squared is 25, so we're multiplying 25 by pi. Let's pull up our calculator. And we do 25 times pi, 78.5. And that, of course, is an area on the bottom, and it was given to us in centimeters, and area units are always squared. Now, to find the volume, we do the area of the base, which we just found, 78.5. And we're going to multiply that by the height of the cylinder. Now, the height of the cylinder here is 10 as well. The height goes from one circle to another. The height of a cylinder is actually a lot easier to see than some of our, our prisms, and so we have to multiply that by 10 which is 785. So there's our volume. It's in centimeters, and of course, since it's volume, we're going to cube it. Uh, next example. Find the volume of the following trapezoidal prism. First find the area of the base of the prism. This time it's a trapezoid, and then use the formula volume equals area of the base times height. Now here is the formula. This was taken straight off your formula page. To find the area of a trapezoid, it's 1 half a plus b times h. Now if you didn't do the trapezoidal stuff in previous lessons, here's how we do it now. Um, 1 half, or we're going to do a plus b, we can write it this way as well, a plus b um, times h divided by 2. That might be easier to do than saying 1 half out front. Now, A plus B are the two parallel sides of the trapezoid. So in this case, and this 6 inches is, is the same over here, so this is 6 and this is 2. So my A plus B is going to be 6 plus 2. And the H is the distance between those two sides. 
So that's 3.5. 6 plus 2 times 3.5 divided by 2. So 6 plus 2 is 8 uh, times 3.5 divided by 2. And that's 4 times 3 is 12 plus 2. That's 14. And that's going to be in inches. And since it's an area, it's square inches. Now over here, we want to take the area of the base, which we found to be 14. And we're going to multiply that by the height. Now the height is from one trapezoid to the other trapezoid, which is over here. So the distance from trapezoid to trapezoid is this 6 inches in here. So we're going to multiply that by 6. So 14 times 6, which is 84. And that's 84 cubic inches. Now, we got one more thing here. A can of Jelly Belly Jelly Beans has a diameter of 4 centimeters and a height of 7 centimeters. So we've got a can. I always like to draw these out when I start. I don't even read the whole thing first. We've got a can of Jelly Belly Jelly Beans. I'm going to draw a can. And it says its height is 7 and its diameter is 4. So that's 4 in diameter. Now a box of Jelly Belly Jelly Beans uh, has a base that is 10 by 5. So 10 by 5. So here's our box. Um, and the height is 7 centimeters. So which box holds more? Or which thing, the can or the box, holds more? Well, we want to find the volume of these two things. Now just by looking at it, they're both the same height. So I would be inclined to believe that they, uh, that probably this bottom that's 10 by 5 looks like it's going to be a lot bigger than a circle that has a diameter of 4. Uh, but let's actually figure it out. Volume equals area of the base times the height. Now in this case, the area of the base is a circle. So to find the area of the base, I need pi r squared, which is pi. The radius is 2, so that's 4 times pi, which is 4 times pi is 12.6. And then I need um, volume equals area of the base times height. The area of the base we found to be 12.6 and the height is 7. So let's times that by 7. And we get a, uh, about 88, approximately 88. And this was given to us in centimeters. So that's 88 cubic centimeters. Now the box is easier to find because the area of the base is length times width, and then we multiply it by the height. So you should remember that volume of a box is length width height. We just have to multiply those three things together. So 7 times 10 times 5, and 7 times 10 times 5 is 350 centimeters cubed. So obviously, when I take the comparison here, the box holds more than the can. So we can say, therefore, the box holds more than the can. And that brings us to the end of this lesson.